thank you for inviting me. This is uh, a different group for me to speak to, and I'm excited to do it. Uh, a Toxidus Design is actually my title for this presentation. This is the editor's title <laughs> for the presentation. Um, the, um, oops, out of range, what did I do? Okay, so here we go. Um, we've been working on downtown redevelopment for a couple of years now. And this is a piece at, from 2010, it's just a piece of a piece from a couple of our artists, Upe Flukaker and uh, Carol Flukaker. And it's a concept piece where they're saying from pavement to prairie. And if you take a look at downtown, as of a lot of cities, they're almost 100% hardscape. So we're gonna hit a really broad brush. So if I'm talking about your field, be patient <laughs> with me. Because we're gonna we're gonna go from naval, you know, twelve to fifteen thousand years ago to looking forward. If you look at Lubbock, you know, it's one of the oldest sites in North America of established continuous human habitation. Folks have lived here for twelve to fifteen thousand years. You know, I, I I'm from Happy, Texas. I could have swore nothing was here before 1890, 1880, right? And so this little, do I have a pointer here? Is that a pointer? The, the little piece, of, those are the Canyon Lakes. That little piece is Avenue J, Canyon Lakes, Frontier Years, and I put the future, that's the Bruno House out at uh, Lake Ransom Canyon. So, Pre-18th century, the native tribal period, this is pretty much what we look like. 19th century, it's a really short transition period where, you know, we've had the Indian Wars, uh, we've come in, the cattlemen have come, they're still living off the prairie. And it's, it's organized, but it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, very, very short period of time, very the last part of the 19th century. And then since the 20th century, really very recently, we have industrialized the prairie. So we get this. Well, it made us rich. Industrializing the prairie really built our churches. Okay, and then after the war, if, if culturally we're Eurocentric, culturally uh, very individualistic, and we're very wealthy. And these are the wealth building years right after the war. It goes on. You know, our football palace, School of Law, School of Medicine, Texas Tech, we're still reap, reaping those wards of, of industrializing the prairie and, and our oil and minerals and wind. Okay. <clears throat> we are indeed, in most, most, most Lubbocks, the majority of Lubbocks would consider these positive facts. We are the second most conservative city, okay, in America. We are among 12, 12 of the mid-sized cities of places to start a business, and our cost of living index is low. Time, Time Magazine just, you know, had this article on how Texas is really the future of a model for the rest of America. Because you can see we're doing everything right. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> and Neil Pearson, I'm so glad you're here. So uh, you do sort of begin to hear a little bit of a rumble. You know, our artists have never really been appreciated, whether they're, they're Natalie Maines or Betty Holly, you know. Uh, the, it's that Lubbock <laughs> or Leave It. Their music, like most American popular music, reflects their desire to escape that environment. Well, guess what? What were the unanticipated consequences of what we've done? Okay, the, the dust bowls. That was a man-made disaster. That, what, that didn't come out of the prairie. That didn't happen before we plowed the prairie. It's still happening. And somehow, I think, 
you know, they're back. They went away. So I think in some ways we actually begin to lose some of the lessons we learned after the 1930s. We have embattled nature. Our aquifer is now down. And we're fragmented through zoning, segregation, and hardscape. And all of these, these seem very like very divergent issues, but I think what I'm going to propose to you, they're actually all the same issue. It's the same fragmentation of our city came out of the same thing that fragmented the science, that fragmented the world. And so when I say we're fragmented, that's the zoning map for Lubbock. If it's red, it's commercial and retail. It's actually illegal to live in a red zone, including downtown, even though they're letting it happen. If it's yellow, it's single family residence and it's illegal to put a business in there. So that you can live on 30, uh, right off maybe 35th Street. Your favorite restaurant could be on 34th Street. We put a big wall between you and that restaurant. So even then, it's right across the alley, you gotta get in your car and drive, right? And in, care, in terms of ethnic seg segregation, we know, you know Lat Latinos are north of tech and mostly black are to the east of the freeway. Now we've, we've formalized that in freeways. So we've, we've and then hard zones, if it's, if it's red, I can almost guarantee you it's non-permeable. Well, what are some other statistics? <clears throat> and these, actually, there are some new ones since, since I put this presentation together, okay? But we're 149th out of 150th in a place to raise a family, okay? The, the article in Parent Magazine is that we're failing families. Lubbock doesn't think that, okay? But somebody out from the outside saw that. What's that about? A lack of public place. We have very few public places. That's where children live, in the public places. The, um, uh, we rank number six on dangerous cities. Number six on dangerous cities, that's aggravated assault. What's that about? That segregation. The residential areas are empty in the day when everybody goes to work. The workspaces are empty every night when everyone goes home. Empty paces breed crime. That's Jane Jacobs, Eyes on the City. Uh, we're fat. Okay? You have to walk. It's very, we make it very difficult for pedestrians, and we make it very difficult for uh, bicycles. We, we went to the North Overton TIF board to get a, an endorsement letter for our bicycle plan connecting the Tech campus through Overton to downtown to the Canyon Lakes. Only one of those members, but one, said, what? Bicycles and pedestrians are a hazard and a nuisance. And we wouldn't even be having this place if Texas Tech would just build enough parking places for their cars. <laughs> so we have that attitude, okay? so. We have issues coming out of exactly our wealth. I happen to be a very positive person. And so, how many of you have seen the film Konya Nascatsi? It's, there's at least one or two. It's, it's not a new film. It's totally music by uh, Philip Glass and all visuals. So there's no really words in it. But the message is Konya Nascatsi is Hopi for world out of balance. And I think that's the argument. It's not that, it's not that we've, well, we've gotten wealthy. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And yet, we've, we've not carried enough balance with us in that world. So, um, we have encased ourselves in an artificial environment that has remarkably replaced the original nature itself. We do not live with nature any longer. We live above it, as it were. Nature has become the resources to keep this artificial or new nature alive. So, what do we do? This is the only big word I know, and I practiced it listening to it on the computer for a long time, and I probably still say it wrong, but atoxidus. So, earliest from the, present from the earliest of times. And so, as we redevelop our city, we need to connect ourselves to our place. So what you're seeing uh, 
that little piece, that's actually going up Avenue J. It's very close to the Canyon Lakes. Um, we're, we're, we're looking at pulling those canyons and connecting to those canyons in our environment. So this is really the outline for the next part of this. Prairie and canyons have supported human life for 12,000 years. Lubbock is a city of individualism and wealth. We've embattled nature and fragmented culture. We need autogenous design. So that's actually a review, not a preview. So drawscape, architectural word. The challenge for designers is to integrate the inevitable dross into more flexible aesthetic and design strategies, and I say healthy. So we've, we've, we've got to work with what we have, okay? And what we have right now is not healthy. So our goal is busting through the barriers in terms of physical connection. We're, we're talking about bike paths and bike loops that, tech, that connect tech, Overton, downtown, the Canyon Lakes. We, we connect our ethnic neighborhoods, and we do it by going over, over the feeder road, under the railroad, and under Marshall Sharp, and you're right there, okay? <clears throat> Avenue J, I don't have time to go through all of this, but Avenue J, why Avenue J is the major north-south connector downtown. Broadway is really a more important street, east-west, but in terms of, it's the only street that connects the Luca Art Center and Civic Center with the center of the CBD with the entertainment district. So it becomes really our street, okay? Um, in terms of healing this street, we have to take what we often perceive as our waste and reuse it. So these are the, uh, the old uh, cotton seed storage units out at, uh, right off of, well, right off of A and Avenue A and between Broadway. And so we're working now with Link Ministries to repurpose those for our, as our homeless facility on the north side of the railroad and as a community well served. But the idea is that you don't scrape all those resources and throw them in the dumpster. You, you take what you have and you work with it. And we're looking at as Avenue J as a place to live. If you're going to live downtown, you would want to live there. So like I was saying a little bit earlier, downtown was zoned 100% commercial. Okay? But if we make it mixed use, it, it, it hits all three of those issues. It makes us less fat, we save energy, and there's less crime. Those are just research. The, the, um, <clears throat> this is the connection to Avenue J. So we take those activities and we, we begin to make the city, ha the street active with active activities and pull that park. So why would you want to live there? You design Avenue J as a major linear downtown park full of activity. This is from our artist again. We've engaged our artists. The artist's observation that Lubbock is full of sunlight and sunlight is full of color. And so we have to make the street full of color. This is really the most direct climate change slide I have. Uh, at one point, uh, our downtown developer, Delbert McDougall, they took up all the bricks on Main Street. And he said, well, it'd be nice if we could have bricks, but we just can't afford it. So we hired a great research assistant, and the slide up there, in the terms of life cycle cost, we use 70 years because the bricks are 80 years old, and they need to be redone, that's true. And the price of asphalt, concrete, and brick, about the same. Well, if you look at the carbon, the last, you know, the carbon footprint, Concrete's actually the worst. It's, wor it's worse than asphalt because of the way you make cement as you burn limestone. In it. Okay, and then you don't have to redo it as often. Oh, you do have to. You still have to redo it. You have to do it twice as often as brick. Okay. This other piece is brick can now be you can put install it where it's a permeable surface. You you space it so it works for ADA. And you have little gravels, so bigger gravels, bigger, bigger, bigger to an engineer depth. You can, if you're in Dallas, you have to. We don't have to here, but you can put a pipe, perforated pipe in there, collect that water in your harvesting water, or an indoor, it's a storm drainage system. That number up there in terms of cost did not include storm drainage system. If the system is a storm, storm drainage system, it actually is cheaper than brick and or asphalt. And if you already have the bricks, you're way ahead of the game. So this little image, 
I think I have it in the last slide. We start looking at uh, we start looking at Avenue J as a dry river bed, not as our river walk, but as our dry river bed, so that it permeates like a dry river bed. The water goes and it permeates. Water gets deflected over into xeriscaping and collects. You slow it down. You don't speed it up. And the, the planting begins to go to the rooftops and up the walls and every opportunity we can, but it has to be our planting, right? And we have prairie dogs already back downtown. And we've had eagles. So it, take, it doesn't take much. You get the native landscape, and you begin to get the native animals. Now, not everybody likes that idea, by the way. So this is kind of a summation. Following the principles of landscape urbanism, the Congress of New Urbanism, sustainable design, and historic preservation guidelines, Avenue J is seen as a destination and as a livable, healthy neighborhood. And I think in terms of the big picture, when you go into greening downtown, when you, when you look at using materials and their, and their carbon footprint, it, it is, you know, and even energy, saving energy, all of these things are very directly related to climate change. Um, we had Brad Lancaster here speaking on water harvesting. We had Jackie Brooker here as an environmental artist, and they've inspired much of this. We have had worked with a lot of colleagues. We're doing a lot of different things downtown after this, including, and I'll quick because I'm going to run out of time, uh, including in April, I have to do a plug, April 2014, we're going to build out one block of Avenue J between Broadway and uh, Main Street. We're going to build it out the way we want it to be. And we're going to do it under a temporary permit because basically everything we want to do is illegal. It's against some ordinance or law. So, um, and we have, we had uh, Bruce Rogers, who is one of our alum that went to L.A. as a set designer. His office is L.A. in New York. His clients are Super Bowl halftimes with Beyonce and Madonna. And he, was, he spent two days with us helping design that urban stage, that set. So that's all done. That's a different presentation, but watch for it. Maybe so, in March. <laughs> so here we are. This is the summation. Prairie and canyons will support human life for another 12,000 years. We are a community of citizens embracing nature's and diverse cultures. It is a toxinous design. Thank you. And I'll take a question or two if we yeah, have time. We, I don't yeah, know. we have time for one or two questions. David, what street or a group of streets in downtown Dallas would have this permeable the, the only places in Dallas right now I don't know that any of the streets do are all private development. So they're, in other words, they're, they're parking lots and things off the streets. Uh, what about Fort Worth, which came up with you know, some new design? Well, both, you know, the, within Texas cities, Austin, I think, leads the way within great streets, and it's, it's had a huge impact on its economic development. The W Hotel couldn't find a place to be in downtown Austin until they found 2nd Street, which is a designated great street, 32-foot wide sidewalk, double LA of trees. They said, we can be here. So um, Fort Worth is probably the, has been in the redevelopment game the longest, and they, they've done a really good job. They have, they organized their streets in a, in a way between pedestrian and cars, and Dallas is just now pushing it. And the new park and over the freeway in, in, in Dallas is fabulous, always busy, always active. And it takes that, think about that hole, which is a freeway, which is now this major green park that is very, very active. People are there all the time. So, but in terms of permeability of services, this in parking lots, it's, that's new enough that it hasn't found its way into cities' policies. It's, it's individual landscape architects and, and engineers that are putting it in more private development. Okay, one more question? All right, thank you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So uh, the, the city officials in Lubbock, are they on board? Do they support your initiatives? Are the city of Lubbock on board? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer or, that exactly. There, there, is, there is the Lubbock, there's a new a Lubbock <laughs> Downtown Development Corporation, which is private. There's formulating a new nonprofit for downtown redevelopment. You have the Arts Center 
the Luca Art Center that's leading the way. Uh, within, okay, a, a motion. The city council in Austin said pedestrians come first, mass transit second, bicycles third, automobiles fourth. And that has to drive our, our transportation policy downtown. <clears throat> and it, all the engineers within the city were very reluctant because they've been trained to move cars fast, right? And, uh, but it, it's happening. It's transforming that city. We're, you, I don't, we're not even anywhere near that within in our, our city council. And, and, that, and that's just, but I think they're reflecting our city. I don't think we're there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.